The Lord be with you. It's great to see you here on this beautiful day God has given to us as we rejoice in the many blessings He does give to us. Uh, for those of you who are watching online, it's great to see you, uh, or for you to be able to see us, I guess I should say. And uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask any of us, please uh, feel free to write something, send an email, whatever the case may be. Uh, a couple of quick announcements for you. Pastor Dan is on vacation with his family. Uh, Victor is doing much better. Uh, he will be needing to have uh, cortisone, prednisone, probably for a month or so to help him with um, that autoimmune disease that he does have and trying to get that under control. But that's the good news. Keep praying for them, uh, praying for him as well. And then uh, in your prayers also, uh, pray for the family and friends of G.T. Gedehun. He died last Sunday at this time, or a little bit later actually. Uh, we did have his funeral already on Thursday. Uh, his son uh, from Mech, who uh, works for the State Department, Daniel and his wife uh, live in Guatemala with their two kids. They were able to come back on Friday. So they were able to be here when GT died in their home. And so it was a great celebration of his faith and the life that God gave to him. Uh, if you want to watch the service, it is online under our, on our website as well. Then also we had Linda Thorson's memorial service, funeral service on Friday. Uh, Linda grew up in our congregation and had moved to Chicago. Her sister Karen still is here, so we had her service on uh, Friday. We also have Dick Garley's uh, memorial service this coming Thursday, which was his birthday. And I don't think I've said this to you before, but the reason why the family wanted to wait uh, to have his memorial service until uh, Thursday is because on his Thursday, he used to always have big parties and <laughs> have family gatherings. And they thought, might as well have a big family gathering uh, to celebrate the faith and the life that gave to Dick. So memorial. Uh, visitation will be at 10. Uh, the, visit, uh, memo the service will be at 11 o'clock as well. By the way, the flowers on the rear um, and over here by the uh, baptismal font were given uh, for Linda Thorson's memorial service, and so Karen had those uh, left here. So we were able to enjoy those in our worship service as well. Uh, so I think as far as other announcements are concerned, take a look in your uh, tidings. There's a variety of different things that are happening and will be happening. Today we're going to be looking at our epistle reading, and especially with the uh, theme of nobody is perfect. The fact that we're all sinners, and we sometimes do what we want to do, and sometimes we do things that we know we shouldn't do. Yeah, you'll hear all about that. We're going to be singing about that as well. And most of all, rejoicing. That although we're sinful, we're saved by grace through faith alone. Got to keep that in there in far, as far as remembering that. So let's stand and greet one another uh, with peace of Christ as you feel comfortable.
If you're able, please stand. We make our beginning rejoicing that God calls us to faith in the waters of baptism and promises us the gift of eternal life and the forgiveness of all of our sins, which is why we hear those words that were spoken when we were baptized as we begin this service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. With the Apostle Paul today, we admit, I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. At the invitation of God, our Savior, let us bring our weariness and burdens to Him, that His forgiveness may rescue us and restore to us the joy of His salvation. For if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean and cannot free ourselves. Even though we rejoice at the joy of Christmas, daily our sins of thought, word, and deed cause us grief. We have forgotten you, even when we needed you the most. Our love for our neighbors has faded. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come at his invitation, seeking the true rest of the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from the ninth chapter of Zechariah, beginning at the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. The epistle reading is from the seventh chapter of Romans, starting with the 14th verse. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being, but I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're able, please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We don't have a lot of kids up here, but uh, I'll see if Ella or Emma wants to come on up. Ah, sure, she's coming. Maybe Gavin's coming up too. Who knows, right? If not, we have a brave soul, right? We only have one little problem. You know what that problem is, Emma? 
you don't have the mystery box. So now what do we do? We're going to punt. Do you know what that means? Have you ever played football? Well, maybe they'll, your parents will explain that to you later. <laughs> okay? Punt means you just kind of have to figure out what you're going to do next. So, <clears throat> have you ever had times in your life where on one hand you know that you should do something that's right, but there's a part of you that says, I don't want to do that, right? Does that ever happen to you? Yeah. Well, that's kind of what the Apostle Paul talks about today. It's kind of like we have two voices, right? This voice over here is the good voice. It's like when your parents say, hey, Emma, it's time for you to take out the dish, or to clean the, wash the dishes, right? Or put the dishes away from the dishwasher. Not sure what you guys have, all right? Or maybe, let's talk about cleaning up your room. I think that's probably something everybody always has to do, right? Do you ever have to clean up your room? Did they ever tell you to clean up your room? You only clean up your drawers. Okay, do they ever tell you to clean up your drawers? Yeah, well, that's good. Do you sometimes have that little voice in your head that says, I don't want to do that right now? Right? But you also have that voice over here that says, Emma, we might as well get it done. Which one usually wins? <laughs> and you know what the sad part is, Emma? Most people are like you, right? We know we'd be better off if we'd get it done right away, right? That's what God wants us to do, right? That's where that good voice is. That's where Paul says, you know the things that I know I should do? I don't always do those things. But the bad things that or other things, like maybe not doing what we're supposed to do, those are the things that I keep on doing, right? Is there good news in all of this? Yeah, there is. You know what the good news is? The good news is, is when you say, I'm sorry I didn't get it done, I'll do it now, right? And then what do Andy or Katie say? It's okay. I forgive you, right? And they're happy you got it done. Yeah. And that's because Jesus loves us and he died for us, right? So we can rejoice that he is going to be with us and we know he's going to help us to ultimately, eventually do the good things, right? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for helping me to love you and do what you want me to do. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, Emma, I'm going to give you one of these. All right, we sing our next hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Text for meditation this morning are the words that were read for you earlier in our epistle reading. This hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea, has been one of my favorite hymns throughout my life. And especially as we talk about our text for today, verse 3 really seems to address it well. Just as I am, though tossed about, with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. And verse 6, just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down, and now to be thine, yes, now to be thine, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we didn't have those fears, those fightings, those conflicts within and without? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we were blessed to not have those struggles. During the last few months, we've had several more funerals than we typically have. And as a result, I preached a number of different sermons, each one unique, each one different, because each person had their own history, their own experiences the different relationships they had with people, the relationships they had with God. And God's word was given to comfort, to hope, to help. And as we think about all of those different messages that focus upon God's presence in our lives, and knowing that that day we pray will come, when we will live anew with Christ forever where we won't have these fightings and fears, these conflicts within and without. All of those sermons had two things in common. One of those is what we refer to as the law. In Romans chapter 3, earlier in our book of Romans, where we find our text in chapter 7, in verse 3, the Apostle Paul wrote something very specific and all-encompassing. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of the people who died, just like every one of us who are present, were and are sinners. We fall short of what God would have us do. But there's the gospel, the good news which we oftentimes have called, in a nutshell, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's the good news everyone heard in one way or another, that God saves us by his grace and we pray everyone who hears that message today, as well as who come for funeral memorial services, will hear that same message. And if they have questions about that, that they may indeed ask questions. Because we want everyone, God wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Our God is an amazing God who continues to bless us each and every day, no matter what we are experiencing, no matter what we are feeling. The Apostle Paul in our text for today expressed hopelessness. Hopelessness as he looked at his life and the difficulties had in making those decisions, those choices, knowing the consequences for sinning against God. Wretched man that I am, 
Who will deliver me from this body of death? And he immediately responds because he knows the answer, and that's the gospel. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. But of course, as we look at this text, we look at it in the context. In chapter 6 of Romans, the Apostle Paul also writes, the wages of sin is death. In other words, what we deserve because we are sinful human beings is death. That's what Adam and Eve's sin, rebellion against God, brought into this world. And because they brought that rebellion, the consequences for that rebellion was their death and your death and my death. Physical death. And what we deserve in addition to that is spiritual death. But the Apostle Paul also writes, just as he does in our text for today, the free gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. You and I live with that joy, that promise, and that hope that when we die believing in Jesus, we will live again with a new and glorious resurrected body as Jesus gave us a glimpse of what that would look like. So we have good news. That good news, the law and the gospel, we need to have in our minds as context for our text today. Because as we look at this text from the Apostle Paul, it can seem confusing. In fact, you might have had challenges in your life sharing what Paul says. Throughout my lifetime, I've memorized it, and sometimes I can say it right, and oftentimes I get it confused. But I know what it says, and that's really what's important, and what's important for you to know as well. And so as we take a look at how does this all fit, I want you to think about your life. I know my life, and my life is sometimes overwhelmed with guilt because of what I've done or because of what I didn't do. And I find that to be very difficult and hard to deal with. Because I don't really want to accept the responsibility for my sin. I'd rather pass that responsibility on to someone else. I want them to have the consequences. Not me. And in addition to that, we you and I also have three spiritual enemies that are also working against us. The devil's on one of them. The sinful world, the material world, and all the enticements of the material world are working against us. And then we have our old sinful nature working against us that we inherited from Adam and Eve that deserves to die and be separated from God So we live with this. And people throughout life have tried to make light of our sinful nature and the challenges we have and try to help us so that we don't have to take responsibility for our sin. Some of you might remember back in the late 60s and early 70s, there was a television show that sought to bring some levity into our world, our society, especially with a lot of the challenges that were going on in the late 60s and 70s. And that television show was a unique show. It was called Rowan and Martin's Laughing. And one of the things I enjoyed about watching that show was listening to Flip Wilson. 
who would come in, Flip was a comedian, he'd come in every now and then he'd say, the devil made me do it. And that became something he was known for as he would appear on different shows saying the very same thing. The devil made me do it. Right? You might have even said that yourself. Because you don't want to accept responsibility, you're going to blame the devil. There really is a theological problem with that, though, isn't there? Can the devil make you do anything? No. The devil can't make you. Can the devil tempt you? Yes. Does the devil tempt you to do the wrong thing or not do the right thing? The answer is yes. And so when we don't do what we should do, when we do what we should not do, it's the wrong thing. And the Apostle Paul, in our text for today, explains it that way. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So in other words, those are what we refer to as sins of commission. The things that we do that we should not do. But Paul doesn't leave it with sins of commission, the things we do that we should not do. He also addresses in our text what we refer to as sins of omission. The sins that we do by not doing what we should have done. He describes it this way in verse 18. I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out, for I do not do the good I want. And then he goes on further to say, for I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. It almost sounds like we have an excuse. We can blame sin and not have to take the responsibility. But the problem that lies with that is whose sin is it? It's yours. It's mine. It's the sin that we inherited from Adam and Eve. It's what we observed in our parents and our grandparents and our siblings and our friends and in our own lives. So the Apostle Paul, conscience, says it rather clearly in verse 21 through 23. So I find it at a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. When and how did you get this delight in the law of God in your inner being? When you and I were baptized, we had this delight in the inner being because God has claimed us, God has washed us, God has blessed us so that we have this desire to do what is pleasing to God. And every day, we can remember that God has claimed me to be his daughter or son in the waters of baptism. And he drowned that sinful nature, that sinful nature, those sins that we have done and will do were already paid for on the cross at Calvary. They were put to death. They were paid for in full when Jesus shed his blood for you and for me. And so when we were baptized, they were drowned with Christ. 
in our baptism. And as Christ was raised from the dead, so in our baptism we too are raised anew. And we are given this new life. And that's why every day you can remember, I am a baptized child of God. I am baptized, God. Help me to do what you want me to do. Help me to put away those temptations that Satan and my sinful flesh and the world would have me do. Help me to do what you want me to do. And God, when I mess up, when I forget, when I sin against you, help my baptism to draw me back to you. And to say, I'm sorry. And God does. God does forgive you. God does forgive me. That's the beauty of what God's word tells us. So even though you and I may at times say, what a wretched person I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? We can respond as Paul did. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. God can change us. God does change people. Remember the apostle Paul was once known as Saul riding along on the road to Damascus that he might arrest Christians. When Jesus appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus. And Saul fell back off his horse, and he became blind for three days. During those three days, there probably was this battle within Saul of the Holy Spirit and Satan and his evil nature as he tried to grasp and wrestle what has happened to me and what does this mean for me and Saul became Paul the man who wrote our text today the man who understands what it's like to want to do good, yet not do it. Who doesn't want to do bad, but does it. He knows the struggle that you and I go through as well. And he could respond, thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Once when Walt, actor Walter Matthau was presenting the Academy Award for Best Editing, he remarked to the audience, I really need a life editor, someone to cut out my mistakes. In the movies, they have those editors that can cut out the mistakes. In our lives, we don't have a life editor like that. We have something better. Jesus doesn't edit out our mistakes. Jesus paid for our mistakes. And that's why you and I are forgiven. The apostle wrote to the church in Corinth, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus took your sins and mine and paid for them on the cross. And because he did, we are forgiven as we come to him in repentance. It's good news. This good news is something God has given to us so that when we are going through the difficulties and challenges of our life, we can also hear those words of Jesus we heard in our gospel reading. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. 
we come rejoicing that our Lord and Savior listens to us, walks with us, forgives us, and empowers us to live for him and for others. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen. If you're able, please stand. The peace of God which passes our understanding guard us in the Christian faith unto life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join me as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we will gather our tithes and our offerings. We also ask that you sign the registration cards, place those into the offering plate as it is passed. We now give to God a portion of what God has given to us in thankfulness for all the blessings we have received. As we turn to God in prayer, I invite you to turn to page 11, the back sheet of your worship folder, as it indicates a variety of different individuals and situations for which we are praying. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh God of grace, God of glory, now sing we now rejoice, now raise to heaven our voice. For having first come to us in the person of your Son, you have lifted us out of our sorrowful bondage to sin and death and raised us to the freedom and newness of eternal life. You have washed us in baptismal waters and renewed us in faith given by your Holy Spirit. We sing and rejoice in thankfulness and praise, Lord, in your mercy. Cause the joy of your gracious reign of peace and hope to continue to blossom and grow throughout the world by the proclamation of your mighty word. To that end, bless and sustain all pastors and ministers of your word and the witness of all who joyfully testify to your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Eternal Lord and ruler of all, save and defend our country. Graciously regard all who have been set in positions of authority among us, that guided by your spirit, 
we may be governed in peace and safety, strengthen and protect those who serve in the armed forces of our country, that they may be upheld in integrity and with honor. We ask especially for your blessings to be with those who are connected in some way with disciples of Jesus here. Brandon, Teddy, Peter, Megan, Aaron, Dan, Brody, Scott, Andrew, Jim, Dalton, and Dylan. Lord, in your mercy, continue to bless the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance all that is needed for the support of our lives, as we thank you so much for the rain that you blessed us with, especially this past week. Bless our homes and families, that we may dwell together in peace, sharing in your blessings. Be with all who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness. Especially we pray for your blessings on Martin, Bonnie, Debbie, Dick, Eileen, Betty, Marion, and Herb. Verna, Mary, Meredith, Philip, the children of Rick and Lynn, and Pat. For those with cancer, Jim, Carol, Jack, David, Michelle, Jill, Patty, Bill, Lyle, Dan, Pastor Norm, Jeff, Wayne, Katie, Gloria, Lana, Rick and Lynn, Joanne, Karen, and those we name in our hearts. We ask for your blessings upon them and upon any who are facing various adversities. Grant your peace and healing, and above all faith in your never-failing promises, Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your eternal protection, O Lord, all your servants who have departed this life in faith and now rest in the sleep of Jesus. Grant to them your mercy and everlasting peace. Teach us all to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And when our last hour comes, be with us and grant us a blessed end. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you're able, please stand. Lord, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue by sharing the growing in the word verse, our VBS theme verse, by saying it. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, verse 12. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our sending hymn. 